Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. I am getting here from work. It was a crazy emergency day shift. And I'm sorry I'm running a couple minutes late, but we are going to talk about career paths in vet med, and we are gonna to talk to someone who's on their way to becoming a veterinary radiologist. So let me get her on here, and then we'll get to chatting. Hello! Hi! Can you hear me okay? This. Yeah. Hold on. Okay. It's kind of weird because it gives you a half screen. Okay, let's see. Mm, I I can move that this. Jess is so excited. <laughs> Hi. I'm excited. How are you? I um, I'm uh, tired. I just got <laughs> my emergency shift ran long. Isn't that life, As right? I do. Yeah. And uh, yes, and so, and I like got a quick dinner with the family, and I feel like I'm a hot, sweaty mess. But I'm, <laughs> I'm excited about this. I had so many people. Uh, message me and save the countdown. So I think a lot of people are really interested in your career path, um, which is exciting. So good. I'm glad to hear. I'm excited Can to you hear me talk okay? about it. Yeah. Can you hear me? So yeah, you're break. You were breaking up just a little bit. So okay. I don't know if you're. Let me turn. Is up the, the internet button. good where you are? Should be okay. Let me see if I can mess that up. Sometimes that's always know, a tricky thing. Like I love technology, but I know. Yeah. Uh, that's a little better. Is this does this seem okay? Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's freezing. It was like kind of freezing on and off. So okay. Um, but if it does it no again, worries. let me know and I can if, switch if we need off. To, and... Yes. We'll, we'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. So, okay. Introduce yourself. <laughs> okay. Um, my name is Allie Dunn. I am a first year radiology resident at Colorado State University. Um, yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at right now. I'm about halfway through my first year, which is insane because it feels like it was yesterday <laughs> started, but um, yeah, out in Colorado, out in Fort Collins, which I love. And I was going to say, which is so beautiful there and so nice. I love so it. that's not I a bad place it. to yeah. do your residency. No. So, oh. Oh, no, I was just going to say, there's a lot of reasons why Colorado was my favorite place, but the um, actual city is definitely one of the reasons as well. Yes, which is nice. You're still freezing a little bit and you're really fuzzy. Okay. So I don't know if there's another area with a little better service or not. That better? And we have, yes, that's better. Okay, okay, I just went on like my data, whatever. So this hopefully LT. will be yeah, better. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my sister's on here. Hi, Jessica. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yes, that's way better. Okay, perfect. Perfect, So Good. Okay. First, real quick, because I was like mind blown when I found out that clinical pathology actually doesn't always require an internship. But run me through most radiology specialty. You do do an internship, and then is it a two, three, four year residency? What are we looking at? Yep. So um, it definitely um, almost everyone does a rotating internship, um, and then it's actually becoming more and more common to do an imaging internship after that. So two years of internships. And then um, the program itself varies between universities. Um, I think it's probably like 60, 40, three to four year programs. Um, so it's really variable, but um, my program is a three year program. Um, but I did do two internships before getting into it. So it's been like a, it'll be like a five year ordeal after about school. Okay. So that's like the broad overview. Now we're going to like get down to like the the specifics so okay. what i want to start with is pre-vet like you decide to go to vet school mm -hmm. what did you do in undergrad and was this on your radar at all or was, did this come as you were in school yeah so um 
not at all. It was, <laughs> I started, um, so I went to, I decided that I wanted to go to vet school maybe when I was like a sophomore in high school. Um, I always, so I wasn't like a, a five-year-older who was like, I'm going to yeah. be a vet. Like I always me. liked, yeah. yeah. I always, um, I always liked animals and like, I knew I wanted to do something science, medicine-y. Uh, most of my family is in human medicine. Um, but when I was, I think, yeah, sophomore, junior, started shadowing at a clinic and then just kind of like fell in love with it, um, fell in love with uh, general practice. And that was like all I wanted to do. Um, so I went to Michigan State for undergrad um, and I what was my degree? What was your degree? <laughs> zoology. I was like, what was my degree? And it was in zoology. Okay. Um, and I, um, so I actually went into Michigan State um, with the hopes of getting into the, that scholars program, um, which at Michigan State is like, it's like through the honors college. So if you're in the honors college, you can apply to be, to be um, a vet scholar. So that just means that you get it's like a smaller pool of applicants and I think it's 10 people that they choose every year and it like reserves you a spot in um, vet school. Okay. So I got into vet school, um, actually my like first, halfway through my second year of undergrad. That's which crazy. Was, like, insane. So it's like a pre-application mm -hmm. situation. Okay, yeah. but you still have to go and finish all of your prereqs and everything do you have to make like certain grades or what's the requirement of that yeah so it is um it's a grades thing and I think that's pretty much the only thing so I just had to maintain a certain GPA and um you don't necessarily have to like get a full degree um I went into Michigan State with um, a lot of credits from high school so I got my um my like undergraduate degree in the three years so I graduated after three years and then started vet school. But one of my good friends who was also a vet scholar, he never even got his degree. So he just did the three years of undergrad, um, applied to be a vet scholar, and then got in through that. Okay, so I've heard of people, there was people that did that at A&M too. They mm -hmm. just did like three years of undergrad, they got their prereqs, and they never got their undergrad degree. And when yeah. I first heard that, I was like, what? And especially <laughs> because like A&M, you get an Aggie ring when you get to like your senior year and you get so many mm -hmm, credits. Mm -hmm. So they were like, oh no, we got our Aggie ring. We just didn't get the degree. That's so like, interesting. That was the important thing to get. So yeah, that's really funny. I've never um, heard of that. So, okay. So you are a sophomore. You're like, I'm in, I just got to yep. like finish strong and you mm -hmm. did. So you don't mm -hmm. even have to like apply and did you do anything like over the summers or do anything specific um, towards like veterinary school or were you like, I'm, I'm good, I'm done and I just need to, does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, no, I, um, so I still did, I still worked at the same clinic that I had shadowed at when I was, um, when I was in high school. So I did summers there um, working, I like started as like a kennel worker and then was like a assistant, more like vet techie kind of person, never was like an official vet tech, but um, did stuff like that. And then I also did a little bit of research. Um, mm -hmm. So I did, I worked in a fish lab. That was when I was like, ooh, research is not for me. I was gonna <laughs> so, say, what do you research in the fish lab? Like, what, yeah. how, what? It was some, some like viral fish disease and we bred fish and then with things <laughs> that could be transmitted. And I was, I mean, I was like a baby undergrad. So I was just there like doing cleaning, that, like labeling things, things like, homogenizing things and like yeah. that was pretty much it so I didn't yeah. like have a big role in it but um it was it was a good good experience and it was on an application so I think it helped a little bit yes. um and I did um a couple of my classes I did a class where I like worked at a zoo over the summer so that was fun and like a good experience um but mostly I mostly just kind of worked at the same place that I had worked at before I did a little bit of equine I did like not, I did a little bit of equine. I like shadowed at a couple places, did like yeah. over the summers, a couple, um, just to kind of like get some experience, get exposure, but, um, yeah. So you get into vet school. Where did you go to your vet school at? Michigan state, Michigan okay. state as well. Yep. So it was all, um, it was all through thing. Michigan state. Um, I'm from Michigan. So I went like 40 minutes from my hometown to Michigan state and then, um, stayed on for vet school there. And is Michigan State structured uh, where you kind of do like classes and a little bit of hands-on and then you do like a clinical year, your fourth year, and that's where you get 
a lot more of your hands on or how is it kind of structured overall? Yeah, so they do two and a half years of didactics and then halfway through a third year is when we start clinical year, or at least it was when I was, um, when I was there, I'm assuming it hasn't changed significantly. Um, so yeah, we do just a year and a half that mostly classwork, we have like labs and stuff, but um, that's that last year and a half is when you're actually in the clinics doing your rotations. So what, to walk me through the moment when you were <laughs> sitting there or you saw something or you experienced yeah. something and you were like, ooh, like I kind of think that radiology might be something for me. What, what was that experience or that moment? Yeah, so I spent like the first three, two and a half to three years being like, heck no, I do not want to do an internship. I do not want to specialize. I am so not interested. Anytime they would talk about it, I would like zone out. <laughs> it's yeah. like, this is not for me. Um, I like was like dead set on going back to Michigan, probably working at like that same practice. Um, that was all I wanted to do, or I guess going back to Michigan. I was in right. Michigan, staying in Michigan. Um, and then, um, God, it sounds like a cheesy story to say, but I was like, I was, no, on, my, no. I was on my medicine rotation and um, we had, I specifically remember we had this case where this is like a young puppy who we were looking for ectopic ureters. And as a student, I was like following around and like went down to the ultrasound um, to watch um, the resident look for the ectopic ureters. And I was just watching and I was just like, shoot, this is so cool. What a fun job. Like what a fun role to play in this case. Um, so that was like the first time that I was like, ooh, this is kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, and then kind of like throughout the rest of my medicine rotation, just because medicine and imaging, um, yes. you know, coincide a lot. Um, every time that there was like an ultrasound or a CT or something like that, I got really excited and I would like get really involved. Um, so that was, that was kind of like the first moment that I started being like, okay, I might, I might want to do this. Yeah. Yeah. And then that was the time um, that was like, I don't know, just a couple months before Michigan State's um, imaging department just kind of like fell apart. So we had, we went from two radiologists to none within, I think it was like a month. I think they were gone like May, June. Oh. So I knew that that was happening. And I was like, my um, radiology rotation wasn't supposed to be until after that. So I was like gonna be on a radiology rotation where there weren't even radiologists there. And I had done, I had done like, I mean, I was a good student, but like, right. I'm, a rel I'm like a little timid. I'm not, I'm not someone who like stands out a lot in class. So I didn't like, you know, I didn't know them. I didn't like make an impression over the years. So I was like, okay, if I'm going to like figure out if this is what I want to do, I really need to figure this out. So I like changed my entire schedule. Um, I started emailing different places to see which places would take um, outside students for their radiology rotations. Um, I like dropped some other externships that I had, had planned to like make room for radiology ones. And I ended up doing, um, I think I got three so I got a university, a private practice, and then like an imaging only facility. Right. Um, so I did three, two to three week rotations and all of those. And just everywhere I went, I was just like more and more. I was like, okay, I can see myself doing this long term and being super happy. I'm really interested in this. Um, but you like, I mean, that's impressive that you went that long in school. And then you were like, hit with it. And then, yep. but you were smart enough to say, okay, so now I need to like get this experience and mm -hmm. see what's it really like. And it's kind of good that you did like the private practice imaging only university, because those are kind of your options with your degree, like which yep. direction you're going to go in. So that was yeah. smart how you did it, but I'm surprised that it, you know, was so late in school that it kind of hit you over the head, you know? Yeah, no, it was, it was weird. Cause I was like, I was so not, I, I was like, yeah. I You're cannot like, I don't work do an hard. internship. I uh, yeah, I, well, I mean, I was like, I don't want to be in more school. I, no, yeah. uh, like, um, the thought of doing an internship where I had to work ER was horrifying, terrifying. So I was like, I cannot, Yeah. that, that alone was enough to make me be like, no, I can't do this. And then, yeah, once, I, once I realized that I was like, okay, I think, think I like this I was like I'm gonna make sure so I'm gonna put in put in the work and make sure that this is what I want to do before I put myself through an internship yeah um, so that's what I did and I was like okay shoot I think this is gonna be worth it I think I'm really gonna love it so let's let's go for it I I, I like that and I like that story because it kind of you know I think so many people go into 
school thinking like this is what I'm going to do and they they feel like it's hard to change that um, mm -hmm. and I think school is a great opportunity to figure it out you know yeah because uh, that's when you're really exposed to things and and that's why I'm trying to do this series to like also kind of tell people what it to expect and what the experiences mm -hmm. are but everyone's experience has been so different each yeah. specialist you know how they came to what they decided to do um so vet med just wants to know how many radiology rotations or externships total did you do during your fourth year i think you said three three yep you? okay mm -hmm. so I and there three two and weeks I... each i think two or two weeks and i think one might have been three weeks if i remember um okay yeah i think so 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 I mean, yeah, that's, I did, like, the good thing. The good thing is you were intentional about mm -hmm. what you were going to do, and like found places that fit that. I, I always tell, especially you know, fourth year students, I'm like, use your externships wisely. Like, either you're oh, going into sure. practice, try to go to places you might want to work, so you can like mm -hmm. experience it and feel the culture out. Or if you're interested in internships, visit the places you want to go because. You don't learn that much in like an hour or two of visiting place, but if you're there for a couple of weeks, like that's when you really get a mm -hmm. sense of the reality of what, you know, the experience is going to be. Um, young Breezy wants yeah, to know, sure. how did you go about emailing other schools and practices for an opportunity? So how did you contact the people you contacted about the externships? I think I just, I'm trying to remember. It seems like it was a lifetime ago, but I think I just like no, I know. cold cut, like emailed people. I just would go on their website, see if there was an email and I would just introduce, send them an email, introduce myself. I was like, Hey, I'm a fourth year vet student. I'm looking for externships. Um, sometimes if I couldn't find like the, the radio, person. like a radiologist, I would just find like a general person and be like, is there anyone you can direct me to who can, um, who can help me with this or who has more information? Um, so I just sent a lot of emails. There was a lot of emails that I didn't get responses to. Right. And I was just like, okay, keep on keeping on. Um, so that's, yeah, I would just, just email people and yeah, most worst they can do it is ignore it. Yeah. I was going to say, and, and then you'll be fine. And you'll go to the next one. But most places are bigger practices, uh, that take externs. They actually have a, like a point of contact. And so if you check mm -hmm. like websites, it'll say like extern coordinator, or it'll say something yes, and that's then true. you can, um, contact that person or even just call the front desk and be like, Hey, I want to extern. Yeah. Who do I get in contact with? But there is usually that one person, mm -hmm. um, but I like that you kept at it and then you tried the different rotations. Did you feel like there's a big difference between your like private practice imaging only and university externship or not? I, yeah, I did because um, I think part of the reason is because when I went to um, my, the university rotation, I was like a part of the student rotations. Mm -hmm. So I kind of just like, merged with their students who they already had there whereas where I was when I was at the private practice um, I was like there by myself yes so I think that that was like a little more like an immersive experience mm -hmm. um for my my imaging or my the academic one I did stay like a third week so I think I did the two weeks with the students and then I stayed on a third week so that third week was really great because I had like gotten to know people yeah. um and I could like and I got a little more like involved with what was going on but um yeah and then the the imaging internship they also had externs there um so that one was a little more structured as well I think and they I think they partnered or partner with western okay I, I so wrong. they had western students going so I think they had western if I um if I'm remembering correctly I think there were western you have resident brain. You're like, I don't know. I know. I'm like, and I mean, it seems like a lifetime ago. It like wasn't that long ago, but it really, yeah. it seems like forever ago. Um, but yeah, okay. they were all, all different, but good. And it was, I mean, I learned something everywhere. So it was great. So you are about to graduate or you're in your fourth year and then, mm -hmm. you know, your goal is veterinary radiologist, right? Mm -hmm. So tell me, you need to go into a small animal rotating internship first, or do you look for regular internships or what does that look like? Yeah. So I, um, I went through the match. So I did like a small animal general rotating internship. Um, I think I, uh, I think it was maybe May. I think so. Like match is typically October to December ish is when like the application cycle. So I think it was probably like four to six months before that. That was when I was like, 
okay, I'm interested in this. I'm going to do this. Um, and so I obviously had to get like my letters of recommendation, um, which was stressful just cause yeah. like, I mean, I was like, like I said, I, I was, I was a good student and like, I worked hard, but I wasn't a standout, like sit in the front of the class, raise your hand, all the mm -hmm. faculty know you, everything like that. So I had to like work a little hard to, I mean, I had to work hard for everything, but like I had to work to get people right. who I thought could write me good letters. Um, I ended up getting, um, I think it was one of the emergency doctors, um, the, a cardiologist, um, one of the radiologists at the private practice that I had externed at. And then my, um, the doctor who I worked with on my PBAP, which is like the practice, practice based ambulatory something that we do at Michigan State where you like go around with, it's either like equine or some sort of large animal thing and you like ride around with them for three weeks. Okay. So I felt like he did a good like character, just like yeah, who I am as a person. Well. So yeah. yeah. So um, we Which were just is like important. in the truck. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you, did you apply to university only small road, small animal rotating internships or did you apply to private practice ones too? Like for the match, did you match yeah. yourself with, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I did, um, I did both. I did, I think probably like 16 or 17. Um, so for the match, um, there's like, you can either do like one tier, which is like one to 10 or nine or like 11 to 20 or like 20 and above. So I did like the 11 to 20 and that's like the places that you can apply to. I think I probably did four private practices and then the rest were academic. Um, I went into it very much being like, okay, I'm going to do, I'm going to rank every single academic first because that's where you need to be to get a residency. Um, which I think, I do think there are a lot of advantages to being in an right. academic internship. Um, but I actually ended up, so I was at a, I did a private practice internship and I ended up ranking the place that I um, ended up, yeah, I ended up ranking the place that I ended up at, I think like third, third or fourth. Okay. I think, um, which was like very shocking to me just because I was really, I was like academic or bust. And then these other ones are just backups. I just picked some places that were like relatively close to Michigan because my husband then boyfriend was staying in Michigan. So I was like, okay, if I'm not getting an academic, let's just pick a private practice that's like close-ish. Right. Um, but the one that I um, ended up at, I was at um, a, a VCA down in Indiana. Um, I... So you had to do the emergency <laughs> that you were dreading and fearing. Yes. yes. <laughs> but I did get very lucky and everyone might hate me for this, but my internship, we did not have to do any overnights. For you. What? Yeah. It's like the only. Everyone's like, let me write down that internship. <laughs> like, let me. They don't have know. a program anymore. Yeah. Their program is gone right now. Oh no. Um, which is a bummer. I think. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so I like, I got my interview there. The intern director um, called me and I was like, oh, I, I really like her. I think we would get along really well. I think this seems like a good place for me. And then the radiologist actually set up her own like interview with me. Um, and she was um, just like, very much like, hey, I would love to have uh, intern imaging, interested in imaging. Like I would love to be a mentor. That's what I was um, and ask, we just was if there was someone there who mm -hmm. had, who did radiology, you know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. So there, they had, um, one full-time and then a, a part-time radiologist. Okay. So the full-time was like my, my mentor the entire time. Um, and she, she's great. Um, I love her, but yeah, we just like really, I just felt like I really connected and I'm a very big, like vibe person. So I yeah. was like, even though my head is being like, you should rank academic before everything else. I was just like, I just, I think this place would be good for me. Well, I think um, that if, if people like uh, care about you and want you to succeed, mm -hmm. you're going to learn more and you're going to get yeah. more out of the experience. So that that's not to be set aside. And then eventually they're also going to champion harder for you for, sure. for the next stage. Right. Mm -hmm. Like if you have somebody out there saying like you should, you know, go with her. So I do have a question because I yeah. think when I think like radiologists, I think x-rays. Right. Mm hmm but you've named a couple of different modalities. So when you were doing your internship and the radiologist was like, you know, there in the practice, what, mm -hmm. how many different imaging modalities were there that you were learning about? 
So um, our hospital has um, has CT and MRI, the private practice that I was at. So we were doing x-rays, ultrasound, CT, and MRI, um, nice. which was great. It was a great exposure. And um, the radiologist there was really great about getting me like hands-on, Experience. mostly ultrasound, because that's kind of like the next um, next step modality, um, but also getting me exposure to CTs and MRIs. So um, it was all the whole shebang, everything but like nuke med, I think would be the only thing that we can yeah. have exposure to. So if you had to rank those four, what is your favorite to least favorite? Oh, it's so hard. It changes so much. What? Um, ultrasound yeah. wins every time. I'm so, obsessed with ultrasound. Okay. I agree. I love, love ultrasound. And I think I went into imaging, um, loving ultrasound and being right. like, ultrasound is my favorite, my favorite. And I still most days love ultrasound. But ultrasound, while it's the most satisfying, I think, like it's really satisfying when like you get that Mm -hmm. that great right adrenal or like you find the ICJ and it's like the perfect ICJ image. Um, and like, I really love aspirates. Like I love that kind of stuff when yeah. you have like a 70 kig Bernie's mountain dog who's panting and like, won't say. get sedated. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is frustrating and you it can't is. even find anything. There's gas throughout the entire gastrointestinal tract. It's just, um, so I think ultrasound is, it's like, it's either one or four, depending on the day. It's either yeah. my favorite or my least favorite. Depending, depending on, on the, the patient. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then ooh, probably CT, then RADS, then MRI. But okay. I don't have a ton of MRI experience. Um, okay. At Colorado, we don't start reading cross-sectional. So CT and MRI until um, the end of our first year. So my, I think as I learn more about it, I will like it more. Right. Um, but MRI is like, like CT is okay because it's like pretty much just like a three-dimensional x-ray. Whereas like MRI is like its whole other thing. Oh, You're awesome. like, okay, what color is, or is, is fat or fluid bright on this? I don't, and it's, there's it looks so like many that, different sequences. So yeah, it's it looks overwhelming. Like psych test to me, you know, where it's like, what do you see in the image? Yeah. And I'm like a butterfly. I don't know. Like, that's what it feels um, like sometimes. So Ben Med just said, can you explain a little bit more as to why academic um, is maybe better than private practices for residencies. Um, and I've always kind of been told that it's because you usually do more like research journal clubs. Mm -hmm. uh, there's kind of just more expected sometimes uh, of additional learning uh, when you're doing an academic internship versus a private practice one. Um, mm -hmm. Is that kind of your understanding too? Or what do you think? Yeah. Yes. It, yeah. Um, I think for my impression always was that I just think you like academic loves academic yes. and almost all residencies, almost all residencies are academic. Um, it, that's like changing a little bit. Like there are definitely a couple more radiology private practice. And I know like other specialties are having private practice images as well. Right. But I think um, a lot of it is just like academic loves academic. So if they see that you went to the same school or you did your internship somewhere that they know people who have, been at they know people there they're like that's a good place where right. like private practice is more of a mixed bag you might get a really good internship um and there definitely are ones that are great but there are also ones that are not great and that you don't get um that didactic portion which my internship can you hear me yes you okay you, you, you just for us for a second um, my internship, we did get a good, um, we got a lot of didactic still, which was really nice. We still did journal club and stuff like that. But I think a lot of, um, a lot of private practice internships are just a little more unknown. So I think mm -hmm. just like, which if they're just like looking at a paper and reading the name of a name of where you did your internship, if they see North Carolina State University, yeah. Colorado State University, Michigan State University, they're gonna be like, okay, I, I know that. Whereas if you have a lesser known private practice internship, they might not just get that like Warm initial, like feelings. just name. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So well, I, think, and I, I think it's very, uh, I hate to say like good old boys network, but I do think like vet meds really small. Oh, for um, sure. And a lot of the specialists kind of know each other, but especially like an ac academic specialist probably really know each other. Mm -hmm. um, and so that just makes it when you have that network and it's so tight, uh, it's, it's definitely like word of mouth helps. And if someone knows you and you say you're great, I think it helps. So, definitely. Um, no, I think so much of it is like who, you know, mm -hmm. which is, you know, unfortunate, but that is just kind of like when you have, when it's such a small, small community, um, 
and you know, they only, they're just reading your application. They're going to call people and talk to people. Right. And so if you have, if you're at an academic institution, um, they are more likely to know people who they can talk to. So I think that is a big it makes reason why. Yeah. And then, so let's... yeah, I don't know. I feel like I was just always told kind of throughout school when I was talking it's... about residency. There's a little bit of a, like... but... there's a little bit of a, like we're academic. Mm -hmm. Like there's, yeah. there's a little bit of a, I don't know. I I've seen it too, like yeah. based on where you come from. So, yeah. um, a couple, let's, let's make sure we address some nitty gritty questions. So yeah. how much did you get paid for your rotating small animal internship? Thir 38,000. 40, 38 pretty good. 38 or 40. I think okay. it was 40. I think it was 40. That's I was pretty, 40. Yeah. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So that's private pretty practices good. are mental health. Yeah. A little they bit pay more, a little more. Yeah. the academic ones are. Mm -hmm. And did you, um, someone asked about GPA, like how important it is when you graduate. You kind of said like, I wasn't a big like gunner student, mm -hmm. but do you feel like, I mean, I don't think you can really have like a two five or like yeah. barely be passing and, and mm -hmm. get an internship. I mean, you need to at least be making like a solid B average, right? Yeah. I mean, wouldn't you think? I, I think so. Um, I, I had a class that was intense. So we had a lot of like four O students. Um, I had a th three, eight, I think, but I, mean, I think I was strong, but I was only not only, but like I was 44 in my class out of like 120. So like top third, which is, I Good. was very happy with that. I was pleased with that. But like, I feel like you hear so many people being like, if you're not top 10%, right. Don't even bother. And I just think that that's silly. I'm like, I, yeah. you need to have good grades and you need to show that you put in work or you need to have great other experience and you need a great right. personal statement that explains why your grades aren't good. Um, but it's not the end all be all. I don't think I, just... there are a couple of places that I do think they'll like say, Hey, for here, you need at least this GPA or your application is just not going to get looked at. Yeah. But then there are definitely other places that I think are a little more open to other GPAs and they're yes. not as hard and fast on the cutoff. Yeah. Danielle wants to know about your schedule and we will get to that. Um, like if, if the lifestyle of a radiologist is as nice as I think it probably is, but, um, yeah. you're, you're still in your residency. So you finish your small animal rotating internship at VCA yes. and mm -hmm. then you do what next? So, um, I did an imaging internship. So okay. I actually, so like the, cause the match is so early, like match starts in October and you start your internship in July, yeah, which is insane so because it's like you, you work for three months and then it's like, okay, let's do it again. Yeah. Um, so I, my first round of, my first round of application, or I guess my second time in the match, I applied to, um, residencies and internships. Um, so I, I, I knew that like there was a chance that I wasn't going to get a residency. So I was like, okay, let's apply to imaging internships too. Um, I applied to um, pretty much every residency that was available except for Oregon because my husband was not going to be able to get a job there. He already looked and he was just like, there is nothing in like yeah. a Which makes a hundred mile radius. So I yeah. was like, okay, well, that's when like, we'll cut off. But everything okay. else I was like, I'm going to I'm going to do this. Um, so I applied to all of the residencies, all of the internships in the match. Um, and I did not match anywhere. Okay. Which was hard. A bummer. It was very hard. <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, I mean, that's like, like opening like the VERMP page at 8am and then just seeing like, I'm sorry, you did not match. It is just like, it is soul crushing. <laughs> so did not match anywhere. Um, but it's not uncommon. Like, let's, let's throw it out there. There's, oh, yes. Oh, for especially, sure. Especially, you know, with certain, certain specialties, mm -hmm. it, it is often a, a multi attempt to yes. get to the next level for sure. Yes. And I think like, I, I knew that. And I was like, okay, there's a very good chance this isn't going to work. But I was like, okay, I applied to internships. So if I don't get a residency, I should at least at least not, but right. I was like, I should. And like, I got, I had gotten interviews at a couple places. So I was like feeling pretty good. Um, and I didn't, I didn't have like, not that I didn't have a backup plan, but I was like, okay, I think I'm going to be okay. I had had 
like things in the back of my mind being like, okay, what would I do, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I was like really, really feeling hopeful. So it was, um, yeah, you know, when you, um, when you're like, okay, even if this doesn't work, this probably will work. And then like right. that also doesn't work. So, um, didn't match anywhere. So then I kind of did, um, the same thing that I did with my externships where I just started emailing places. Right. Um, any of the places. Yep. And so the scramble, um, like the true scramble where they release, um, like with in the matches, like where they release the unmatched residencies and internships and the unmatched right. applicants. But for radiology, they're just like, there's just not enough programs. So I think that's the big thing. So there was nothing on paper that I could scramble to. Scramble to, right. Yep. So I um, emailed any of the places that I had interviewed and I was just like, hey, I did not match. If you guys are considering doing a sponsored position um, or anything like that, please let me know. I'm very interested. Nice. Um, didn't get any bites from that. Um, I emailed any other people, any of the other radiologists who I know. And I was just like, Hey, if you hear about any program anything. Or anything like yes. that, please keep me in mind. Um, so I ended up getting, I got two um, imaging internship interviews. Um, so one was at the place that the private practice that I did my externship at. And then the other one was um, at a blue pearl in New York. Okay. Um, which um, I was terrified to live, go, go live in New York. So I was like, I'm going to, if I get this, I'm going, I'm going. But like New York was a scary, a scary. Right. And they were like, I mean like working cause it um, required some ER. So it was like working in New York doing ER. In the ER. Like, oh yeah. my God. So, um, so I got funny. both of those interviews and then didn't get either of those. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, it was like, and this was March, I think. So like the interview process took like a month and a half. Um, cause I think match was beginning of February that year. And then this was probably like halfway through March that I was still had no idea what I was doing. Um, and I'm like, a, I'm a planner. Like yeah. I have my, the next 10 years of my life planned out. So I was just like, it was just panicked for me. Well, this um, is like a good, this is a good lesson now. Mm -hmm. And especially if you're planning on having children, like nothing yep. will go according to plan yes. from then on out. So you I just, know. I mean, just, you got to go with the flow. Like mm -hmm. that's, <laughs> yeah. you're learning, you're learning now. So yes. you, um, we only have 20 minutes to get through everything. Oh left. my goodness. Yeah. So Sorry. I just want to, no, it's okay. But you scrambled, scrambled. What did you end up at? Did you do another small animal rotating or did you find an imaging internship? Yep. So the place that I was at, the rotating internship that I was at actually created a spot for me. Nice. So they nice. had, they didn't match their um, the rotating, the third rotating intern. So they were scrambling for a third rotating intern and they were like, Hey, maybe we could keep Allie. So they talked to like their higher ups, the radiologists got on board and they ended up creating a program for me, um, which was great. So, so I'm was it, excited. was it just like another small animal internship or did it count as an imaging internship? It was a, it was like a on paper imaging internship. I still, nice. um, nice. I did like, mm -hmm. it was like a third imaging at the facility, a mm -hmm. third imaging externships so they right. were like we want you to be able to like go visit schools go do all those things and then a third er so i did okay. work a little bit more er which was it's scary but <laughs> it was yeah. Nice. yeah yeah well that's okay so you get through another year with them imaging internship and then mm -hmm. it's like time for the dreaded match again right yeah for residencies mm -hmm. and you're like <laughs> it was yeah so this, this time went this one went a little, a little better Okay. Obviously. Um, so I did. Yep. I went through the match. I applied through the match again, but actually Colorado State is out of the match. So um, I applied. I applied there. I had gotten like more research under my belt. Um, I had like submitted two papers and I had like one accepted. Um, mm -hmm. So I had like my I'd strong, I had strengthened, strengthened my application. I had the imaging internship. Um, so I applied to, I was going through the match and doing all of my interviews, but I was also outside the match applying for Colorado. So um, how do you, wait, how do you find the outside the match ones? Just word of mouth, like talking to. Yeah, everyone. Okay. And like, it's on, it's on their website. And then just like, everyone just kind of knows what schools are outside the match. So like UC Davis, for anyone interested in radiology, UC Davis, um, Washington and Colorado. And then I think Purdue 
is now out, those are all outside the match. Okay. So you have to like go on their website. You have to like email your, it's not through the burp. You have to like email all your stuff to someone. So it's a different process and they all pick, um, they pick their um, residents before the last day to withdraw from the match. So you're not like stuck in the match anymore, but you still have to like go through some of the match because you don't know if you're going to get that spot or not. Do you think, um, like young breezy wants to know if you think research is necessary, pretty much everyone I've talked to has said research certainly gives you an advantage. And I would mm -hmm. definitely think in the academic realm, especially they would yeah. want to see that you're interested in research. Um, cause that's usually part of your residency. Yeah. Uh, so I think that that is, yeah, I hate to say like necessary just cause I'm like, there are so many people, but I think I would strongly recommend, I wish I had done yeah. research earlier. It would have made my life so much easier. Yeah. Not easier, but like, I just think it would have, it was Giving a big a stressor. A yeah, it was a big yeah. stressor to be like, I have to get something submitted and accepted or I'm not, but I mean, I, that's how I felt. I was like, right. That's so that, that was the one thing, the big thing that I changed in between my two applications was I put more emphasis on research. And I think that made a difference. So I would definitely recommend it if and you have the opportunity. Uh, that med just wants to know, do internships exist outside the match also? Or are they, most of them are in the match, right? I don't think. Yeah, I think, I think as far as. Rotating, like small animal. Yep. I think the small animal rotating. I'm assuming there are probably some outside of the match, but nothing that I know about. And then for okay. the imaging, um, there are a couple outside the match. Okay. So there's a couple inside the match. Um, Gulf Coast and what's the other one uh there's a vca out in la those are definitely inside of the match i think there's one or two that are this year and then there are a couple that always go after match and kind so of you need to so you need to make sure you network and you mm -hmm. have good connection skills and you are researching mm -hmm. because there's a lot of different routes and ways that mm -hmm. you can do this yeah. um it's not linear at all which For is sure. great um, someone wanted to know if international grads have a good shot at internships. As far as I know, as long as you take the NABLI and you go somewhere that will help you with visas, then yes. Mm -hmm. um, I think so. But it's more residents usually that are, that have like international students. I see more international residents than I do interns. Um, I, if you're, if you're mm -hmm. talking about like the island schools, like Ross and stuff, most of them are still considered like AVMA schools and so even though they're yes. international it's still you can be a part of the match and it's not any different than being like physically in the states mm -hmm. my yeah no i i think i don't i don't claim to be an expert on that but i think that sounds no. that sounds right yeah so hopefully that helps um okay so you finally are in your residency what is your like daily life what's your schedule are you only sitting in like looking at screens and doing mm -hmm. ultrasounds imaging, do you have to do a little teaching and like ER stuff or what does mm -hmm. a resident resident life look like for you? Yeah. So, um, my schedule right now, um, if I'm not on call, it's like, you know, five days a week, uh, like seven or eight to five typically. Um, we rotate which modality you're on every week. So you're either on RADS, um, ultrasound or CT slash MRI. So that's like a combined, um, right. combined spot. So you do, you read all the cross-sectional, cross-sectional imaging, um, our mornings. So we have, um, either case rounds where we just, um, basically faculty just like picks cases that they want either everyone, all the other residents to see, um, or if they want to like ask you specific questions and kind of like grill you on it. Um, so they will pull up cases. We do an hour of that where you just, they'll be like, hey, pull up X, Y, and Z's rads. And then you read them out um, as the resident who read it. Or sometimes they'll be like, hey, Allie, read, read these rads for me. Um, it kind of varies That's, like which faculty is like on. a lot of how pressure. It is. It's a Casey little bit. back to school. I'm like, It ah. kind of feels like that. Yeah. Um, so that's from eight to nine. Um, and then we also have journal club, um, biweekly, and then we do KCC, which is, um, known case conference. So that's our boards prep. So it's basically, um, kind of similar to how our rounds ago, but basically you just get, um, like three to five cases. You have 30 minutes to look at them. They're in the PowerPoint that's uploaded that morning. 
um, to look at them and write your responses and then you send them to faculty and then the next half an hour we like go through all the cases and they'll pick a resident to read the case so that's basically okay. how our boards are structured so it's our it's our board's prep um, and we also do equine rounds once a week um, okay wait I have a quick question for that so yeah. when 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 you're looking at like graduating Mm -hmm. are because I know some places like equine facilities that have radiologists and all they do is read like the equine rads mm -hmm. and then you have you know small animal so are you do you kind of pick a species as you go through your residency to focus on or because even exotics like exotics yeah. have x-rays and imaging so mm -hmm. do you have to kind of pick a track through your residency or do you just learn it all so right now we learn it all um so we do actually CSU has like a pretty big exotics caseload, which I yes. did not really know before I started, but I'm quickly learning that we see a lot of exotics. So, um, and then we also do <clears throat> all like the farm animals um, and stuff yes. like that. There right. is like an equine specific imaging residency that just got created. Um, actually the girl who is the resident um, at CSU is like the first equine specific resident. So she's going to take her boards in a year and she is just boarded an equine, but everyone else who graduates from the other standard res um, residencies are boarded in all specialties. So I, in theory could go on to read and do like, any large of them. Animal. Okay. Yep. Everything like that. I but most people, to. yeah, I was going to say most people pick a track or pick a specialty mm -hmm. when they leave, just like surgeons you have soft tissue surgeons and orthopedic surgeons and like, you know, they kind of pick mm -hmm. their thing to do. So you're going to go small mm -hmm. animal. And are you thinking you're going to yep. go to a private practice or stay in academia? Or what is your thought process post residency? Oh, um, I am not 100% sure yet. Oh, sorry. I'm just gonna Yeah. You know, can you hear me? That's okay. You, uh, okay, you have sorry. time to figure it out, just like you figured it out in vet school. So yeah. it'll be okay. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I like... Oh, sorry. Um, That's good. There's a lot of aspects of every different path that I like. Um, one of the residents who's just finishing is going to do like, um, like a mobile ultrasound and do mobile ultrasounds for like all yeah. of the general practices and some emergency facilities, which I'm like, that sounds really interesting and something that I would be interested in. Yeah. So I'm going to kind of like, she's going to be a little bit of my guinea pig where I'm going to see how it works out for her. And then I might consider that. Um, Michigan. There's a ton of people that do that in, in our area and go around and do mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a which cool, it's kind of nice. And you get to, I don't know. I feel like it's nice to, Get Make your own hours, build relationships with thing. different practices, yeah, stuff like that. So it's, it would be good. But I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent set on anything yet. Well, you have a lot of, you know, possibilities, which is good. And I think mm -hmm. the way veterinary medicine has gotten more and more kind of specialized, or clients expect more and more. I think having, you know, your X-rays read by a radiologist, or having ultrasounds done, uh, or at least read by a radiologist, like I think all of that, even for us general practitioners, really helps us. Mm -hmm. um, because clients kind of have a higher and higher expectation um, yeah. of things. Uh, Young Breezy wants to know, what is the perk of being boarded? Do you get a higher like sign on bonus? Um, so what do you, do you know, like what your salary would be looking like? Um, I guess it probably would depend which route you go, but let's just yeah. say like went into general practice or private practice being their radiologist, Mm -hmm. How much are you making? How many days a week are you working? So I think, um, I think something like academic would be, I want to say I'm like the 150, 150 K. And then I think private practice is probably on the higher end of the 100s up to the like mid 200s. Yeah. Um, and similarly with like telemedicine is kind of in that range as well. I think that's what yeah, because yeah. a lot of people work from home now. Like we, mm -hmm. we submit our X-rays and our uh, ultrasounds. We submit them, and they're read by some remote person, and then it comes back to us. And I think probably half those people work in their home, and they can, you know, work the hours they want to work, mm -hmm. which is yeah. the freedom is really really nice. Uh, For sure. When that's what you do, and and there's not many jobs that you're on call where you have to go be on site mm -hmm. for 
readings unless you're doing ultrasounds for, like you said, an emergency clinic. Mm -hmm. um, so I would think the hours and the work life symbiosis would be pretty good for radiology specialty. Is that kind of yeah. your feeling too? For sure. Yeah. No, I think um, one of the big, I mean, I love, I love imaging, but like the work life balance is definitely a big draw. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the radiolo the radiologists <clears throat> that I know, um, they do, yeah, they work either, um, you know, four, three to four days a week. And then sometimes we'll do a couple extra um, telemed shifts on the weekends or um, on like Fridays, or if they are like, you know, have a big financial thing coming up, then they can just pick up telemed shifts. Um, but a lot of them, the work-life balance is, is really good. And, um, and a lot of private practices, especially, um, I think the radiologists aren't the ones that are on call. They have like right. the on-call situation was so they'll send out to telemedicine to read. And then right. <clears throat> sometimes like alternate with, um, sometimes like internists or onco oncologists who also right. can do ultrasounds. They'll like alternate <clears throat> helping on the weekends for ultrasound and stuff like that. So it's a pretty good work-life balance. balance. Is, so there's a couple yeah. questions. Let's see if we can get through them really quick before yeah. we get cut off by Instagram. So um, is there a main telemed for radiologists like Scopio for cytology? So <laughs> we use in practice on Cura um, and pet rays uh, are the two that we use uh, to read our ultrasounds and our x-rays okay. via telemedicine. Um, there's like a couple big companies that do it and hire mm -hmm. a lot of radiologists. Do you know of any off the top of your head that do all the? Yeah, I think Antec and IDEX are the two biggest ones. And then Vet mm -hmm. CT is up there. Um, and then I think Pet Rays would be the fourth one that I would list. But Antec and IDEX, at least from my impression, are like the two two big telemed big companies. Ones. And they do a lot of um, they do a lot of sponsored residencies. So um, a lot of the Right. Academic institutions have residents who are sponsored by them who will be going to work for them. After. Work for them, and then they can do it. Yeah, telemedicine. Mm -hmm. I was just like, uh, Dr. Shiloh wants to know: Do you have an opinion on choosing to specialize after being in practice for a free few years? Are you at an advantage or a disadvantage, and is it worth it? Um, I don't. So I I've heard of quite a few specialists that practice for a couple years, and in some places, I think. And certain specialties, that's actually something that's nice and they like mm -hmm. seeing that you have practice in your belt. What about radiology? Do you think there's an advantage or not an advantage to being in practice before you apply? Um, I don't know. I feel like uh, I think it could go either way. I think as long as you I think the biggest thing for radiology, at least my impression, is that the programs want to know that you're not just that you didn't just like go into practice and then you're like, okay, I want to work from home and read rats. They want to know yeah. that you, that you love, love the specialty that you're committed. So I do think there is a chance that that is something that you're going to have to put more work into proving on your application, whether that's through like CE research, right. um, extra experiences, but proving that you, you know, truly want to be in this because you love the specialty, not just because you like, want more like, time and eh, I think I yeah. want a different kind of lifestyle. So I think um, as long as you do that, I don't think that there's necessarily an, a disadvantage to working out. I don't think that I would say like they are looking for that, but I don't think right. it's going to deter you completely. What about uh, Vet Med Jess, which you've been very interactive and helpful, Jess, I'm happy <laughs> you're here. Uh, she wants to know, do you have any advice regarding like student debt and loan repayment? And is there anything you wish you had done differently or you know now, looking back, you want to make sure that you let everybody know about? As far as student debt goes, um, I am very, very lucky that I have very little student debt. Um, I, my parents helped me out a lot. And then I also am married and my husband has a very good job. So as far as like financial stuff, I don't think I'm like the best advice giver in that no, area. I think, yeah. I think it's good. I, and I, I, yeah, I, I always feel, I don't know. No, you shouldn't feel, I, I, I have a lot yeah. of support too. And mm -hmm. it, it allowed me a lot more opportunity to mm -hmm. do uh, different things and not worry as much. Like I got paid $30,000 my first year out for my internship. Yeah. Um, but I have a, a husband working and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was, it was nice to have that support and not have to worry as much about the yeah. financial side of it. So I think it's nice to be transparent about it. Um, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, 
and make sure everybody knows. Is there anything you would have done differently in your journey or that you feel would have um, changed things or made it easier on you if you'd done it differently? Or do you feel like things played out the way they were supposed to and yeah, it is what it is? I, yeah. I mean, I think things worked out the best the way they were supposed to for me. Um, I think I think I needed that extra year of internship to like go into residency feeling good. So ultimately I'm really happy with like the path that I ended up on. But I think the one thing that I would have changed is I would have been more involved in school um, and like gotten to know faculty, been gotten involved with research if I could. Um, I think that um, being, you know, kind of like sitting back and not being super involved didn't, didn't help me any. Um, I don't, I think I was able to like work through it and like I definitely grew a lot like as a person and as a, right. as a doctor during my internships and I ended up at a place that like was great for me but I think um I think if I had gotten if I had gotten one of those like really really challenging academic internships I think I would have been really overwhelmed just like coming from school where I was just kind of I wasn't right. like a gunner so I think that to be thrown into an academic um, internship with like a lot of gunners would have been really hard so I think that was one thing I would have done differently is I wish I would have like put myself out there more during school, been more open Actually, to the idea of specializing and not just like ignoring it every time yeah. someone was like, not, Hey, you happen. might change your mind. And I was like, no, you don't no. know me. I'm not going to change was, my mind. Yeah. That was me saying that they're like, well, you might end up in small animal. I'm like, never, it will never <laughs> happen. And I'm like totally in small animal. Um, I will say there was a thread earlier, which they were kind of answering for each other, which is awesome. But they were asking, how do you still connect and engage because everything's virtual now um, with COVID through school. Mm, mm -hmm. um, and I, I do think you still, someone said a, a great advice to like, when you're on the Zooms, like show your face, like turn your video on, ask yep. questions, like still be engaged. Um, I think emailing, you know, professors and saying, hey, that was really interesting what you shared. I have some more questions. Like, and then like, like they already said on the thread, if you see them in person, eventually they already know your name, they know your mm -hmm. face. And I think it just breeds familiarity. Um, For sure. And if you, if you show you're interested, my experience has been, if you show you're interested in something in vet school and you want to connect, you'll actually eventually have opportunities come to you where people will say, hey, we have this cool thing and we need student help with it. Would it be something you're interested in? So mm -hmm. if there's like a specialty you're interested in and you are kind of reaching out to those specialists and you're saying, you know, I want to learn more. I want to hear more from you. I want to know more about your life then they are going to be more willing to think of you and reach out to you if they have something going on uh, that would be a good opportunity for you. So you guys were giving great advice in the thread, um, but I just wanted to make sure that we covered all of those things. So sorry, uh, I don't know what you just said the past like three or I know. I saw minute. You, okay. I saw you I freezing. Like... So I was like, oh, well, I'll just finish <laughs> out what I was saying. But no, I, I, I do think that there is a lot in vet school you can do even virtually to, to mm -hmm. connect and network. And most specialist specialty tracks, you really do have to have that, those connections and that support. Uh, yeah to even just get you through the hard times. Like if, if you think about it, you did your internship and then you didn't get the residency, but the place where you did the internship then made an imaging internship for yeah. you because you had that relationship and they wanted mm -hmm. you to succeed. And that, yeah. you know, that says a lot right there. Yeah, no, for sure. And that's why I was like, I'm so happy. I trusted my gut when I was ranking and everything like that, because I do think that that having the support of the people there was huge. And I'm like forever grateful to them for everything that they did for me, but they were, they just like, were going to bat for me for everything and wanted to do everything that they could to help me succeed. And I think that that was, yeah, just like getting, finding those people who you just, um, really you know, who know, with. yeah, who you connect with, who they know who you are and what you want and like how, um, like, you know, how, how much you want this and that they will, d you know, do anything that they can to help you. So yeah. I think that getting, building those relationships is just really, really important. Well, I uh, just want to encourage people to follow you on Instagram at the rad vet because yeah. you post cool cases. And uh, I think it's been really interesting and I appreciate you coming on here and being so transparent, sharing your story. Um, I'm hoping it'll help you know, a student out who is interested mm -hmm. in this profession. Um, but I got, I just want to tell y'all that I have um, neurologists coming up. I have the dermatologist coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, 
We have, I'm working on a surgeon and internal medicine specialist. And if you know of any specialists on Instagram that would be willing to be interviewed, uh, reach out and let me know. Um, because I would love to interview uh, more veterinary specialists and just let them tell their story. So I appreciate everybody watching and thank mm -hmm. you for joining me. And I guess I'll save it on IGTV and we can share it with anybody else who might want to know since a lot of people are probably watching the Super Bowl. So <laughs> my, my husband's upstairs and he was like, you know, the Super Bowl's on, right? Yeah, I, I know. Like, mm, I know. Yeah. I was like, I don't know that attendance would be great for this one, but the people who really are interested are going to show up. And we had a lot of really great interaction and questions. Good. So I, I think yeah, that was well, really helpful and I appreciate everyone watching. So thank yeah. you so much, Allie. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, thanks to everyone who was watching. And if you have other questions, you can always DM me. I feel like I, tried to do a good job responding to those so yeah um, it's hard yeah. well you're in a residency so it's okay I know I'm always like I sometimes I'm like I will respond in like a day or two yeah when I can like get on my computer but um yeah feel when free to reach out if you guys have more questions because radiology is best <laughs> yeah all right all right see y'all later thank you have a good bye. night bye-bye